Hello guys, um, perfect. So yeah, today I'll be talking about custom uh, PostgreSQL checkpointer using LangGraph. It's a bit of a mouthful, but I'll try to go ahead and break it down into pieces so that you guys can kind of understand how to save data in uh, AI application. So we can go to the next. So my name is Will, I'm a founder at uh, Reactor. Uh, so we basically help companies build uh, custom AI workflows in Southeast Asia and also, also in, uh, in the US. Uh, so currently we, um, we're, we have about two customers here in Southeast Asia, one in the UK. And uh, yeah, I'll tell you a little bit more about deploying your own app, uh, uh, building your own application, uh, especially in production using AI uh, a little bit later. But we'll get, to, we'll get to talk a little bit about how LangChain works first. And before I start, has anybody used LangChain in production? Use it just testing or link chain? No? Never? No one? Okay, great. Perfect. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next. Okay, so I think in the first talk, they, they used a specific, um, they used an SDK from OpenAI uh, just to, you know, just to basically, you know, call the LLM and then go ahead and, and then, you know, they have a specific prompt, they have the LLM, and then, you know, they have the output. So the difference between just using the SDK and using LangChain is the following. You have different types of components that you can use, like tools. For example, you can use tools that are pre-built, like searching the web. Uh, you can use tools to, you know, figure out if you want to find the what if you want to find out the latest the weather or um, or you can use custom tools for calculators. I'll get into the specific details of what type of tools that you can use in production, but um, you can also use like things like RAG for for you know retrieving information, uh, and then also you have also the ability to like use your chat history when you're interacting with the large language when you're interacting with your LLM app. So, for example, a lot of the times when you're using the actual SDK, you um, you can't typically save your memory. So, LangChain has a has ability for you to go ahead and save your memory and retrieve information from it. Okay, and uh, has anybody here used LangGraph before? No? Okay, obviously if you didn't, if you haven't used LangChain, you can use LangGraph. Perfect. And then go to you can go to the next slide. Okay, cool. So what is LangGraph? So LangGraph was actually built by LangChain, the team at LangChain, and it's based on uh, Prego, which is, uh, was built by Google. Uh, originally, Prego was built for re-rank. So you, you usually, when you're re-ranking sites and you're batching requests, uh, so it was built to build like a gra or graph database so you can retrieve information and you can pass information very quickly. Um, and so how LangGraph works is you basically have your, your graph, you have your node, your main node, this is just as an example. Uh, and then you have your tools, so you can search, for example, you can search hotels, you can find the best prices in case of, in, if, you're, if, you're, uh, if you're an employee at Agoda, you'll probably know this. And you can co confirm your hotel choice and then send a payment link. And then you have your state, uh, so you, I guess, most of you use JavaScript, right? Okay, great. You guys use React, great. Okay, state management, great. That's what it is, your state. Uh, and so what you can do is you can save your messages, append it, and then also have your hotel choice and your booking history right in there. So if we just scroll down. Okay, so for, for example, for the travel uh, agents that we're building at the moment, uh, one of the requirements for it is that we want to find the best prices and we want to be able to book your travel agent right directly into your app. Um, so a lot of the times when you're prompting ChatGPT, under the hood, it's actually using a lot of different things, uh, like architectures that you, that you might not be familiar with. We'll, go, we'll get into details about the architecture that you can use when you build like, large, when you build like uh, um, AI apps a little bit later, but this specific architecture is called a supervisor architecture. So essentially you have your question, it invokes a travel node, and then you have your router, which is your conditional node. So you basically, it runs a sentiment analysis on whether or not this is actually a question regarding um, finding hotels. And if it does, if it, if it is, then it moves on to the next node and then it, 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 it goes ahead and invokes a search hotel. And then that invokes find, the best, price, the best prices, and then we have an interrupt. 
So an interrupt is when the user actually makes the choice whether or not they, they want to they wanna choose that hotel one, hotel two, or hotel four, whichever hotels that they want. And then that's when you're, once you, the, the user has chosen that, then we can confirm the hotel choice, and then we update the state directly. Um, and then we, we then, we then uh, use a conditional router to update the actual choice, and then we, have, we can send a payment link, uh, which is another tool. So you can think of your tool sets, and then you have your travel agent, which is, a, which is the actual node that are connected to it. So your large language model has basically helpers that it can, that it can, basically, um, that it can basically retrieve or look for. To help to help it out. So, I think the main difference is when you're building out your standard application like at Agoda, you're building out your search system, your your um, like an application that that we saw previously. It's all crude, right? So, create, read, update, delete. This is a bit different because um, you're actually giving power to the large language model to make the decision to retrieve a tool or use a tool that it needs. So, it's a bit of a shift of how you're thinking. It's in terms of like thinking, if you're if you're thinking of deterministic and imperative programming, where you have conditions and those conditions are set by you, uh, but actually over here you have the sets of rules and the LLM has to make a decision to use those tools, whether or not to use those tools. So, and then we can slow scroll down a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see this. Can you? Is it possible to click it? <laughs> it's so small. You could probably click it, I think. Okay, yeah, so here's how sort of it works. So you basically have your state right up top, your check pointer, which we'll get into a little bit later, which is your Postgres saver. Um, and, and then right after that, you, have your, you initialize your state, and you have your travel agent. This is actually where you control the state. Uh, and typically inside of that, you would have different things like your tools. Uh, and then also your invocation for the graph. Um, I didn't have, I don't have the picture there, but if you guys want to talk to me later about it, I'd be happy to show you the code and everything. And this is where you're actually doing the invocation. This is Python, so sorry if you're a JavaScript developer, but <laughs> Python is much better. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. It is, it's easier, come on. It's, it's much easier and it's performant. Okay, so anyway, um, this is one singular endpoint um, that you can invoke and, and then it would find the best prices and everything. So uh, if you, yep, and you can zoom out. Okay, so let's get into what is a check pointer. So essentially, a check pointer is, uh, is, a, is somewhere where you can store states in a graph. And the difference between saving data let's say in a standard database, like I mentioned, is you're doing, uh, at a basic level, crude, right? Um, for, for your check pointer, it's a bit different, um, where you have a connection, which is like your PostgreSQL URL. It could be something that you're using for, like let's say on, on Superbase and you have the URL. And then you have your concurrency, which is your pipeline. So the concurrency pipeline is, is where you is, is basically where it sets it sets up the um, the actual database with, where it creates the um, the tables, and then if it's enabled, uh, this is the this is the actual part that's um, that's a that's a bit different than the crude the crude apps is it batches most of the uh, it batches uh, uh, the the commands from SQL like uh, puts tuple list and then also writes, so it's slightly different where every single invocation with your, your large language model or your chain, we'll go ahead and batch certain requests together and I'll show you how that works. <clears throat> if you go down, perfect. Okay, so now going back to our example, we have a travel agent node, so I think if you, go, if you scroll just a little bit up, oh shit, I moved that. So this one, <laughs> this is actually the question, and then um, over here, if you, um, if you remember what I mentioned about check pointer, Every check pointer has a thread, and that thread is then saved. So this you can think of as like your messages saved, your message history with your agent state. This is where it's saved. Um, and then so anytime you're invoking a question, let's say you want to search for a booking somewhere, right? It will get the current version of the graph state. Um, so it would run a batch for a.get. And if you zoom out, 
then you would have your conditional node whether or not it's searching for hotels. And then once you get to the user picking the actual hotel, which is you know, hotel one, this is where we're bashing operations like a.get and a.put, where you have to get the actual uh, current version of the state. And then you then update that the hotel choice is hotel one. And then this is where you go ahead and you update the state and then you eventually go ahead and uh, the user approves it and then you get your answer directly to the user. So let's say if you're using an SDK from OpenAI or Vertex, building, a, building an application just like this might be a bit tough um, just because you don't have the control flow um, when you're using one singular SDK. So LangChain just allows you to give gives you the ability to go ahead and architect your apps in a way where you have a where you have a human human in a loop uh, workflow. Okay, and uh, yeah, so this is this is how Checkpointer and Postgres internally are saved. So you have your thread ID again, like I mentioned, um, and uh, each thread represents a version of the state. And actually, one thing that I forgot to mention was if let's say you're on version three of the graph state, every, every thread has a, has a parent.ts, parent underscore ts, which referenced the previous state uh, of, the, of, of the actual, of the parent and child, and, and then a timestamp, which, uh, which isn't in there, but yeah. Okay, we can move. Okay, so let me take you through a real world example. We're working with uh, Salary Hero at the moment. So they have an issue where they're growing about 20% Every month, per uh, you know, for per company that they're that they're working with, and uh, they have maybe about a thousand plus employees that are coming in and and interacting with the app, um, and they need a lot of help, meaning like they need information about loans, they need to retrieve information about uh, you know whether or not they can take out a loan this month or the next month. And they're getting about, let's say, 800 requests per day. Um, so, and they only have five people, five customers, uh, five customer support, and uh, they're only able to, to they're only able to reply about 300 messages per day. So, um, they were constrained in that environment. So, they try to go to different vendors, uh, but they really they really couldn't build like a custom solution because a lot of their data was dispersed everywhere. They had data on Excel. Data on data on Excel, data on Google Sheets, uh, pretty much everywhere. So, so basically, we came in and we we first what we do is we build out a we build out a, a, a graph model just like this, uh, just to kind of represent like what we're what like this different state of the flow. Uh, this is part of it. I'm not going to show everything, but um, you can think of the user coming in with their question. Um, with you know sentiment analysis before I actually explain that the one part of one part of the issue that they had is that their users are online so we need to identify who the user is um, so one thing is what what they would do what they did manually was they they interacted with the customer directly and then try to figure out who it is look up in the database who it is okay which company is it okay which is it priority one okay and then they went ahead and replied to the user. So basically, I, we basically erased all of the steps from the human that's doing that. And the first thing that we're doing is we're greeting the user. After greeting the user, we're updating the state that the greet is true. After doing that, then, the, then we're verifying the user. This is, where, this is where the large language model is then invoking uh, authentication link so that the user can log in. Once the user has logged in, we saved it in the state. And then we then reroute them based on priority. So it's rerouted to customer support, uh, large language model that's able to then, you know, basically just give information to the user. One of the things, once they're routed over here, um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the term called cruise. Uh, so basically you have a master agent. Uh, if you go right up top, I think. Oh, okay. So you determine whether what, what question it is. And then you have a master agent, and that master agent is then able to then give it, uh, basically pass that information, pass it to the right agent. So company policy, general info, getting a loan, delaying payments, and then that master agent has tools. If you guys remember before about tools, 
those tools have different types of use cases. So tools, they retrieve information from Google. Uh, they retrieve information from Sheets. Um, so they do a lot of customization to then reply to the user. Like for example, delay payments. So they get a, like an influx of delay payments that's coming in. What we do is like we notice, okay, there's a delay payment. We then trigger a tool that's that, that then replies, that then sends an email to the customer support team like, hey, there's about 800 users that are that are asking for that are that are basically that are that are that have a delayed payment, and so we need to you need to basically look at that. So, um, yeah, this is the different ways you can kind of architect it. If you go down a little bit, uh, you might have to exit out of the thing. Yeah, so just to kind of give you an uh, explanation of, of how you build these kinds of applications, if you go on langchain.com, you can, you can kind of like take a look. But once you get to LangGraph, it might get a little bit complex. Um, so I would recommend just going through the documentation like thoroughly to understand. But the very first part that I mentioned when this is the use case for Salary Hero, um, the company you're working with is we greet the user first. This is a singular LLM with no tools, just get reading the user. The second architecture is called is a basic supervisor agent, which has a supervisor and tools that it can use to basically talk to the user and verifying who the user is. And then you have crews, and those crews you could think of, I don't know. If you're a teacher and you have different types of, uh, you know, helpers that are there, one is changing the diapers of the students, and the other is actually teaching the students and assisting the students. Um, the teacher can invoke different tools, different people that they have that she has in, in her tool set to uh, retrieve information or give information. So this is the same things when you have hierarchical crew teams. But in that case, that would actually be the principal doing that. Um, and this is a good paper to read. <clears throat> if you've never, if you've never built these kinds of system before, you're not going to understand it. I didn't understand shit. I just put it on ChatGPT and explained this. Uh, and then, <clears throat> but it's great. It's honestly, it, it gives you, it gives you a perspective on how you can build like these, these like multi-agent systems. Um, a lot of the, anytime I say I say anything about like, oh, I'm building a customer support agent, like, oh wow, this must be easy, but. Um, the hardest part is the fact that like information is dispersed depending on the organization, uh, and uh, building something custom is is what they're looking for. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, again, uh, Reactor. Uh, so we're on we're on LinkedIn. We're these are my my email if you want to reach out if you want to talk a little bit more about. What, I, what I've been mentioning during this talk, great. If you want me to showcase some examples of applications that I'm building currently with uh, companies, great, I'll do that for you. And if you, if you wanna, yeah, if you wanna talk anytime, I'm, I'm here. All right, thank you.